the Raptors absolutely grind out a win in Orlando. And I think grind is even an understatement to what this game was. Now, there tonight down in Orlando, Raptors win 90-83. Holy smokes. A really tight game. A very, obviously, a very low-scoring game. Somehow, the Raptors come away with this one after a horrific first quarter, or first half, uh, you know, offensively for the Raptors. The worst first half this season. They come out in the second, and they play better. And the defense was incredible from minute one to the final minute. And they find a way to win. I mean, it was an incredible basketball game on the defensive end for the Raptors. Norman Powell sparked the offense there in the third quarter, really getting them going. Scored the majority of the points there in that third quarter. And they found a way to propel themselves to victory. I mean, let's get into this ball game here real quick. First off, this, you know, first quarter, 23-20. In favor of the, the Orlando Magic there after one quarter to play. Like I said, Raptors shot the ball horrendously. They could not shoot a ball for their life. Pascal had an awful game. You know, they really didn't get a whole lot going offensively in the first quarter, but obviously defensively they were still intact. 23 points allowed. You're only down three at the end of one. That's okay. Now, second quarter, again, the offense still can't get anything going. Once again, another 20 put up by the Raptors. Only 40 points. That is the lowest, if I'm not mistaken, it's the lowest scoring quarter or half this season for the Toronto Raptors. And they give up 24. So you're minus seven at the half. Now, at one point they were minus plus, plus 10. Um, however, they were able to crawl back and make it a seven point game at halftime. So they're feeling a little bit better about themselves. Still though, they only have 40 at the break and that is not what you want to see, but somehow you're still only down seven. Now in that third quarter, like I said, Norman Powell was the catalyst on the offense. He scored 19 of the 26 points, 19 of the 26 in that third quarter, he was knocking down threes, getting in ones. He was looking great out there was Norm Powell in that third quarter. And the Raptors' defense dug in even harder. I didn't think they could dig in harder, but they did in that third quarter, only allowing 12. They allowed 12 points in that third. They scored 26, plus 14 quarter. You're up by seven at the end of three quarters of play. Much, much different quarter than we saw in the first two. Great job by the Raptors finding a way to adjust mid-game. Now, what Nick Nurse has been doing, that, and I know I'm throwing it back, but Dwayne Casey never did. Norman Powell was hot in that third quarter. What did, Nor what did, what did you know, Nick Nurse do? He left him out there. Letting him go. Letting him play. And he scored 19 in the quarter. Casey would have pulled him, put his, put his starters back out there because that's what he does. And a great job by the Raptors. A great job by Norm Powell in that third quarter, getting that lead. And going into the fourth, they found a way to hold on to the lead. They eventually got to double digits at some point. And they kind of just held on from there. 24-24 apiece there in that fourth quarter. And then the Raptors found a way to win. Like I said, 90-83. The Orlando Magic had a streak of 70 games of less than 20 turnovers. The Raptors made the Orlando Magic turn the ball over this evening. Where is it here? 22 times. Broke that. Once again, the defense for the Toronto Raptors is incredible. The Raptors as a team only shot 37% from the field, 29% from three, and struggled mightily, mightily at the free throw line. 17 for 28, 61%. Trying not to sneeze here. Trying to hold it in. And... You know, you end up holding Orlando, it helps that third quarter, he did really well, 35% shooting, only 24% from three, and you hold, I mean, they, they got to the line, twenty. they made 20, they made five more free throws than the Raptors, 22 of 27 for the uh, Orlando Magic, 82%, a really good job for them there. Rebounding was a minus, uh, minus six in favor of the, in favor of the Orlando Magic, and offensive glass, minus two were the Raptors. 13 to 11 assists once again the ball moves to the Raptors again it was stuck early on then again you didn't get a lot of points Raptors had 21 assists on 31 made field goals uh, again that's a pretty damn good ratio more often than not they're going to get a lot more than that you guys can do the math it'll probably be up north 25 assists if they made you know 45 percent of their shots or whatnot they would have had eight or not 28 29 assists maybe even that so, a really good job overall. And the Raptors' defense was the reason they got it done today. 16 steals. That's incredible. Now, Orlando had 10. The ball was kind of sloppy all around for the Raptors today. 
Uh, they had 11 blocks to the Raptors' four. Again, we always talk about the length of the Orlando Magic. You know, they're a very long team. Sure, the Raptors, but again, without Serge Ibaka, there you lose some length there. But they're an extremely big team, a long team, even without Vukovic. They're an insanely big team. And uh, turnovers, like I said, 22 for the Magic, only 13 for the Toronto Raptors. Second chance points were minus one. Uh, were the Raptors in this one. Fast break points, Raptors usually win that, and they did 10-9. Again, low scoring game, only had, only had 10 fast break points. It was a really crazy game all around, guys. And let's get to some specific matchups here, because I thought Norman Powell, especially in that third quarter, you, you knew he was going to go off when he made his first two threes. Norm is a guy that can get hot real quick. Kind of reminds me of Terrence Ross in a sense. You know, when, when T. Ross knocks down his first couple shots when he was here in Toronto, we're all like, okay, whoa, he's getting, he's getting hot. This guy can, he can explode, and that's what Norman Powell did today, and he kind of caps it off with that beautiful dunk off the baseline, Woo-hoo-hoo! driving right to the rim and throws it down. An incredible job by Powell, knocking down shots, playing great defense. I mean, he had a career high, thirty three points did Norman Powell, and not only did he get thirty three, he shot a very efficient. 33, 12 of 18, 4 of 4 from the line, 5 of 8 from 3, you know, I mean, he did. A, he also had a couple steals in the block, did Norman Powell, he was electric, and he was the big reason of why this Raptor team won today, he sparked that offense in that third quarter, the Raptors scored 50 in the, in the, in the second half, as much as it still wasn't that pretty, uh, they got the job done. And I was really impressed with what they did uh, in, you know, in that second half offensively and, of course, defensively. But I, I don't even need to go into that. You know, Pascal Siakam had probably his worst night as a Toronto Raptor today, and they still found a way to win. The next man up, Norman Powell. You know, Pascal only had 10 points, 13 rebounds, and 5 assists. Shot 4 of 22. He had a rough night. A lot of bunnies missed as well. 1 of 7 from 3. 1 of 3 from the free throw line. He had a steal of block, 3 turnovers, and a couple fouls. A rough night shooting for Pascal, no doubt. But he's a plus 13 on the floor. You know why? He gave you that defense. And that's what Pascal does. And you know, as much as the shot's not falling, as much as this team, sh- the team shooting was not there, they still worked their tail off on the defensive end of the floor, and they found a way to get stops, and eventually they found ways to get buckets. And it was a great job all around by this team. Uh, OG didn't have a great game. I mean, nobody really did. He had two point seven boards, couple uh, four assists on one of five shooting, missed all three f- threes he took, and missed both free throws, but three steals for OG and an OB in the game. Good job there. Marcus Gasol had 6.7 boards and an assist shot. 1 of 6. 0 of 4 from 3, but he's 4 of 4 from the line. Again, the Raptors as a team didn't shoot very well from the line, but Marcus Gasol did a great job there. Um, and as much people are going to say, well, Marcus Gasol didn't get a steal. He didn't get a block. He didn't make a 3. He was 1 of 6 shooting. It's awful. Plus 10 on the floor is Marcus Gasol. He made an impact, and that's what you want to see from that from the big Spaniard. Uh, Fred Van Vliet made a lot of big shots. Only shot 7 of 20. Was 3 of 5 from the line. Five of, he took 12 threes himself, was 5 of 12 from 3, uh, but he had 22 points, 5 boards, and 4 assists. He got the, his, the stats were there, and the thing that, the, the glaring number for me, for Fred Van Vliet, he had 8 steals alone. The team had 16. Fred had 8. Beast. I mean, look, as much as the shots weren't falling... They were getting stops, and a big, 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 big part of that is Fred Van Vliet. What an incredible job he did. Uh, like I said, eight steals and 22 points, five threes. Great job for Fred Van Vliet. We talked about Norman Powell and how he did a great job in both sides of the basketball. He played 39 minutes. He had the four fouls, but he had those four fouls early in the game, and he found a way to stay composed, let the defense come to him in the third and fourth quarter, and then the offense came to him, and he did a really good job, did Powell. You know, all up in this game. Ronnie Hollis Jefferson, again, didn't do anything crazy, but got the job done. Did a really efficient game. Six points, six rebounds, three assists, shot two of three, had two, a two of two from the line, had a steal in the game, and early in the ball game, having that nifty behind the back pass to Spicy P. Ooh, that was nice. Great job by Ronde in that game. I thought he was really electric in this game. And as of the six rebounds that he had, how many? Three of them were offensive rebounds. R- Rondé Hall Jefferson, excuse me, guys. Rondé Hall Jefferson is balling. He is banging the glass hard. A lot of his numbers are on the offensive glass, and that's what you love to see. Energy, 
grinding, fighting, and that's what we want to see from this team, and a really great job from the Raptors. Terrence Davis, uh, again, only played 15 minutes today. Did he get in foul trouble? He had three fouls early on, four points, five boards, and an assist on two of four shooting. Missed the one three he took. Uh, not a bad night for, for Terrence Davis. Just didn't get, didn't get a lot of run because they needed Powell to keep going, and, and he was just he was just unbelievable today. So there's no, kind of no room for Terrence Davis uh, in, the, in the game there this evening. That's okay. Chris Boucher. Only played 12 minutes, but brought energy. Seven points, three boards, and an assist. Two of four shooting. Three of six from the free throw line. Missed the one three. Had a steal and two blocks to Chris Boucher. So again, goes out there, does a job. Great job, Boucher. Look, as much as this team... As much We're going to sit here and say this was a garbage game, and it really was. You look at the way this team played defensively. The way they grinded, clawed, fought, did everything they could to, to, to win this game. And the Raptors have now won six straight games. They are now 14-4 and four on the year and with the victory today. And the Celtics lost today. The Bucs won, I'm assuming, right? They won by nine. So with the Celtics lost today, the Raptors are have sole possession of second place in the Eastern Conference with obviously Milwaukee being number one, as we are used to seeing. And the Raptors' road record improves to six and four. So a great job by Toronto in that one. And Philly has barely beaten New York by two. At one point, they were getting crushed. So that was, that's a crazy finish there in uh, New York. But as for the Raptors, guys, now... The tough stretch begins. You did your job against the teams that you should be. As much as today was a grind, you found a way to get the job done. And that was a great job. Ladies and gentlemen, the Raptors are 8-2 and two without Lowry and Ibaka. And I think I heard the stat today. The Raptors without Kawhi Leonard dating back to last year. Listen to this. 31-9. and nine. Without Kawhi, dating back to last year. Is everyone else going to say that Kawhi carried this team? Maybe in the first couple rounds of the playoffs he did. But this team is not as bad as people think. This is not just because of Kawhi. It was a huge reason of Kawhi. But not all Kawhi. And we're seeing that now. The Raptors are 14-4, second place in the Eastern Conference. Doing a really good job this year. And um, like I said, the tough stretch now begins for this team. Their next game is in December 1st. So it's the start of the month is here we go. This is going to be a rough one. Now, good news, we're at home for three games. Problem, those three games are very difficult ball games. You, you face Utah at home on December 1st at 6 o'clock. You face Miami at home on the 3rd at 7.30. And then you got Houston in town at 7.30 on December the 5th. And then on the 8th, you go to Philly. So, again, that's four-game stretch that's really tough, and we're sniffing around that Kyle Lowry and Serge Ibaka could be back on Sunday against the Utah Jazz. And it'd be, it would great, it'd be great to have these guys in that stretch against those four great teams. Now, if they're not healthy, sit their butt down because this team isn't bad without them. Now, obviously, you're facing very good teams, so you're going to have to find a way. But this team can do it. We have seen them do it. If those guys are not 100%, you do not play them. All right? Now, and after the Philly game, you play Chicago on a back-to-back. -back. Then, on December 11th, the day before my birthday, you got Kawhi in town. The, the Clippers. The four... So, what is it? Uh, five of the next six games, you are facing top-notch opponents. Now, four of the five are at home, which is great. you got to find a way, guys. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a dogfight. But you got to take it game by game. The Raptors did their job against the teams that they should beat. They're 14 and 4. Now you got to play some really difficult contests. All right? Starting on Sunday at 6 o'clock against the Utah Jazz. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I can't wait to watch this. These are two really good defensive ball clubs. So who's going to be the better offensive team? We're going to have to see on Sunday. All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed the video and you guys enjoyed the ball game there this evening, because. <laughs> Stress me out every every possession, but they got the job done. Smack that like button, do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the game, your thoughts on the video. What were your thoughts on the Raptors today? Who's your MVP? No question, Norman Powell for me. Now, you can say Freddie because 22 and 8 steals, but uh, my guy's Norman Powell. Got the offense going, really took charge, had 33. He was electric, but he's my guy, Norman Powell, player of the game for me. If you guys have any other suggestions, any other player of the games in there, let me know in the comments below. Twitter is down below for myself, guys. Follow up, send me DM, do all that great stuff. And actually, let me back it up to the comments. Out of this next four-game stretch where you have those four really tough teams, I'm not going to go to the Clippers yet because they're separate, but let's go to the four teams we got coming up, right? 
Utah, Miami, Houston, and Philly. Out of those four games, three of them at home, one on the road, what do you expect this team's record to be? All right, assuming, assuming Lowry and Ibaka will not play in any of those games, which I highly doubt that'll happen, but let's assume that's the case and they're not going to play because they're not ready yet. We don't know that. What do you think the record's going to be after those four games? Not, you know, oh, they're going to be 15 and... No, 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 I'm not... I'm not so, out of that four-game stretch, what do you expect? Three and one, two and two, oh and four, four and oh. What are you guys' expectations? Because it's going to be interesting to see what this team does against the big teams in the Western Conference. Obviously, obviously Miami's in the East, but uh, to see again to face Houston and Russell and uh, Russell Westbrook and, and James Harden, and with Utah with Donovan Mitchell and there and Mike Conley and obviously Bogdanovich who's having a ridiculously good year. And obviously Philly, we all know Philly, in Philly, who, who has been incredible there. So I want to hear your guys' thoughts, guys. Let me know in the comments below. Twitter's down below, like I said, all that's great stuff. And uh, I will talk to you guys. Leafs edition will be tomorrow night as the Leafs are back at home. Taking out the Buffalo Sabres, looking to rebound after that really tough loss. Today. Good news! Michael Hudson will not be in net for the Leafs there tomorrow. Freddie Anderson will be back between the pipes. So hopefully a victory is in the near future for the Buds. All right. And as for the Raptors, like we talked about, their next contest, they come back home to take on the Utah Jazz on Sunday evening. 6 o'clock tip-off, Scotiabank Arena. Big stretch coming up. To one game at a time. Utah in town. All right. So thank you so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys then.